So we have my fees here. Um, I'm first off, I'm so excited to have you here when Dr. Gonzalez introduced this project. I just thought of you because of all your stories and everything you've been through, but you received your bachelor in biology and your master's degree. Um, and you are the first person to graduate from this innovative biotech program, first black person to graduate from this innovative biotech program. You're passionate about track and feel and you wanna inspire the next generation of minorities to go into STEM. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Um, why did you start about why did you want to study biology and now receive your master's degree in this biotech company i mean this biotech university like what was your why and just kind of tell us more about your journey yeah thank you so much for having me on and um i appreciated that uh you know i was the person that you thought of when um this project came your way so i really do appreciate that um I, I would say this whole thing started when I was about seven, um, seven years old. I, I just had, just like any kid, you know, a lot of curiosities and things of that nature. Um, and I've always wanted to be a scientist originally, but I never seen a scientist that looked like me. So I kind of gave it up, you know, um, for, for the long haul. And I, I just did sports as a kid and things like that. And then going into... <clears throat> Um, college, I had a professor that was like very influential talking about, you know, we have to watch the the products we put on our body, the the foods that we eat. And she started naming the chemicals and things of that nature. And mind you, I wasn't really too fond of going to college at that point or school at all. But I just did it because it was just like I felt like, you know, I, I was working at McDonald's. I was I was homeless at one point during that time. And I was just like, you know what? I, I, I think it's just best for me to go to school. So I went to school and um, yeah, my biology was one of my first classes. I had no declared major. Oh, wow. And um, for me, my nature is to gravitate towards the most challenging thing. Mm -hmm. And I asked them what was the hardest major there um, because they needed me to declare a major for being on the track team. And I asked them what was the hardest major, and they said it was either nursing or anything in like biology. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Well, I said okay, I, I got some curiosities about biology and stuff like that." So that's how I originally chose my major. And then um, getting into the field per se, like uh, you know, I, I did my undergrad in biology. Um, I, I struggled heavily. Um, <laughs> I, I'm That's always so very hard. Up, yeah, I'm always very upfront and honest about my journey in undergrad. That was a real struggle. I failed actually four classes, all in the sciences. How did you and overcome it, those failure? Um, I remember like I, I didn't want to do anything else. Like I remember like when I felt that that third class, I was like, I, I didn't want to do anything else I couldn't see myself doing anything else so for me it was like okay that was plan a and plan b was to make plan a work so <laughs> that that was like the whole thing um and then I, I'll say for me getting into grad school typically most students they look for programs and they uh, they apply for schools and they you know of interest that that really wasn't my case what was your case? Um, so I literally, um, a friend of mine invited me to a play rehearsal. Really? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on a Saturday morning. Okay. And she says, she says, you know what? I really like feel led to tell you to get here. And I was like, on a Saturday morning though? Saturday? So I, I, at least night. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. So I drove mm. uh, from my school all the way back to Philly. It was probably like an hour drive right. on a Saturday morning. And uh, I ran into an old friend of mine and he says, an uh, old mentor of mine rather. And he says, hey, um, you still doing the science thing in school? And I'm like, yeah, bro, it's all good. You know, he's like, okay, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. I said, okay, cool. I meet 
the first, like, I never in my life met another Black scientist in person. Really? What, what year was that? How old were you? I was 25. 25, you first year, you met your first Black person that looks like you doing yeah. I, I was 25 years old. I had science teachers. I had, you know, technicians and stuff like that. But I never met a Black PhD scientist. Yeah, I think I met and, mine when I was a sophomore in college. My first black doctor in real life. That was a yeah. doctor, black doctor. Like I've, I have, yeah. I've always had seen nurse practitioner that were black. I always see I'm Haitian. I always seen nurses that were Haitian, and because yeah. I didn't see people that looked like me, I was like, I want to do so. I want to do that. I always wanted to do something unique and different. <laughs> so that's cool. yeah. It was even like as a kid watching TV. What did you see? See a scientist? You, you saw Jimmy Neutron. You saw. I wanted to Johnny be a model because of Tara Banks. Because that's the only woman that looked like me on TV. Exactly. I'm yeah. Like, eh. <laughs> it sucks. And, and hence the reason growing up the way I did, it was like we saw a lot of sports. So it was just like there a lot of people that looked like us in sports. So that's why we gravitated towards sports. My brother wanted to be a basketball player, and I remember when he ended up not like not having the opportunity to go to those practices because our mom you know was working like he was devastated I don't think he knew there was other things out there for him to do as a black man yeah hard I think to this day he doesn't know what he wants to do because he had this dream and that dream is gone because he saw people that look like him doing it and it's we yeah. need representation yeah yeah, it, yeah representation is so big and um when I met, uh, his name was Dr. Bar Living. When I met Dr. Bar Living, he said, you know, um, hey, I heard you, you know, taking up biology. He said, have you ever heard of uh, bioprocessing? Mm -hmm. And I was like, bio who? <laughs> and uh, he said, tell you what. He said, let me just give you a tour of my lab of where I work. And he was he was so cool about it. He said, let me give you a tour of my lab and where I work and stuff like that. I said, okay, cool. So he gave me a date um, that week. I literally drove up and the tour, and I always tell kids or, you know, any teenagers um, or anybody in college, rather, I always tell them the important moral of this story, the lesson of the story that I learned. Um, sometimes your character will take you places your talent cannot. Mm -hmm. because that that day right there turned it from a tour mm -hmm. to an interview oh wow little little did i know he was actually the the director of operations of that program and so when we got done the tour he was like i think you should think about applying he said we we really like you here they sat me down like with the staff and everything i'm like dude i thought i was just gonna see some lab stuff and go about my day and, you know, call my friends like, yo, bro, I was in the lab that today. Was nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't expect to go to grad school. And then, you know, because grad school was never in my plan. Mm -hmm. I, I had a job. Okay. I, I, was, I was making, you know, what I thought was great at the time, $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was content. Like, okay, I'll work my way up. Because I started with an internship in flow cytometry. Oh. And... I started, you know, and that came by accident. That's a whole another story for another day if we got time. We had to wait, I don't know, well, 15 minutes. I mean, we could talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I got an internship there and I was content in working in flow cytometry for a couple of years. I didn't, and then I got into biopharmaceutical processing and then that like the rest was just up from there so like how was it like being in your master's program especially as a minority like how was it did you feel like you had a community or like was it yeah. thing? like being like being in science overall like, is it challenging being the only one like how does it feel like being the only one well so th this is something that I've always tried to put out there um I was the only black male but when I got in, um, I, I was the first to get in. And when I got in, um, I actually reached out to two friends of mine that were also African-American, um, two women. 
uh, my friends, uh, Mayetta and Chanel that I went to school with. And I reached out and I said, yo, apply to this program because now. I'm not trying to be the only dude in here. <laughs> so so, so um, it, it was great because they applied and they got in like their, their grades were stellar. They didn't need, you know, they didn't need to put on a facade or anything like they had the credentials. It's just the fact that nobody knew about this program and it's the first of its kind in North America. Good. They, they bought this program from Europe because it's usually like partakes in Europe. Mm -hmm. So they bought it over to North America. And so I called them up and they got in and then, you know, we, we had, we supported each other throughout that. We, we had our challenges and also we butted heads a couple of times because that's, that's what happens yes. in the lab when you, when you have passionate people about mm -hmm. what they do, you butt heads sometimes. But to this day, we are all really good friends and it was nice to have that support group. And I'm thankful that I wasn't selfish and made it about me that's how that's how you do it like you don't yeah and just put other people on you know what i mean yeah this is quote by this doctor i look up to he says i could be the first but i don't want to be the only one that's so true. that's important like not being the only one and bringing people to you as well next question so what does diversity and inclusion means to you um, I actually was just having this conversation with, with a friend of mine. Um, I hear companies all the time talk about diversity and inclusion, diversity and inclusion. Um, you, you can hire a bunch of people that are diverse. You can pay them equally uh, diverse people. You can, you know, invite them into the same meetings. But my, my question is to me, well, not rather a question. My whole thing is uh, it needs to be, uh, if we're going to have a diverse and inclusion space, it needs to be equal treatment as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just because you hire a bunch of black folk, uh, let's be for real here. Just because you hire a bunch of black folk um, does, doesn't mean you finish the job. Yes. Yeah. Like are, as, as a company, as an institution, as a university, are you treating everybody the same? Can, can I present my ideas and not have them shunned, um, you know, away from the meeting? Because regardless, if you're in the room, you earned the right to be in the room and sit at that table. So like I, I never understood the concept of and I had to train myself. Mm -hmm of you know just because i was in the like because not like 10 times out of 10 mm -hmm. i'm the only black person in my meetings yeah and i probably sat in one meeting in my entire career with one other black person and they were a technician so my whole thing was can i have equal treatment that's what that means to me it's not about equal pay i mean of course you better pay me because we ain't cheap but <laughs> Um, it, you know, it's not a, just about hiring and getting them in the door. It's like, can you make me feel comfortable when I come through that door? Yeah. That's what it means to me. Have you ever been in a position like in your field where you felt that didn't, didn't believe that you had the knowledge or education or the mindset for the position? Have you ever been in that position where people kind of treat you differently as far as like what you know? Yeah, I, I I felt that way sometimes. Really? Um, yeah, er, early on in industry because like typically in my case, like is it because you're new, right? Early on in industry, yeah, you're, you're like you're the new guy. You haven't been here that long, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, little did they know that the institution they were sending their scientists to mm -hmm. to get training. I was at that same institution for a year doing my master's degree getting way more training than you had mm -hmm. so it was like i know how to do now i'm not gonna sit here and say i know everything because there's something to be learned from everybody yeah no matter what skill level i've i have a master's degree and i have learned a lot from people with a bachelor's mm -hmm. and then on the same like you know playing down a scale there are people with phds that have learned from me mm -hmm. So it, you know, we're all in this together, but there, there have been times where it was just like, oh, he's the new guy, like, you know, and we're not trying to hear that, you know what I mean? And 
to me, I'm 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 pretty straightforward. Like, yo, you you gonna hear my idea? Good. <laughs> like, That's how I'm back, supposed to and be. I'm gonna back it up with literature too, if you need it. So okay, so another question. So being in your space, do you feel like the pressure of being perfect so that way other people that look like you could have space? Come in your industry. Oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it it uh and my one of my professors actually uh he actually pulled me to the side and, and spoke to me because this had this started in grad school okay um, he pulled me to the side and you know this is when all the articles were coming out about me and all this other stuff and it, it it felt like a lot of pressure at the time. Like, dude, I just wanted to be a college student doing what I do and, you know, graduate. And I felt like I had to be perfect. I couldn't make no mistakes. And my professor pulled me to the side. He said, if you're perfect, what room do you have to grow? Mm -hmm. You know, so now I look at it from a growth standpoint. And, you know, I understand that trailblazing is not for the weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, but you're doing it so well. It's just good. Yeah, it, it is very tough out here Um, <laughs> when it comes to being the first. But for me, I think it's pretty cool. I get to put people on and tell people about the program. Um, You know, there's actually a young black man uh in my program today. He's going to be finishing up in May, so he'll be the next black man that's finishing the program so that i actually told him about so that's what it's, it's about putting people on and getting in these spaces but yeah i feel pressure from time to time to be perfect but i understand i can't be perfect at all i'm proud of you so you went through homelessness you were working at mcdonald's so like what challenge did you go through like growing up in philadelphia like how was your childhood like did you ever think you could be a scientist like being in, in the science field based on your background yeah I, i'll say for me i came from i was very blessed and fortunate to come from a two-parent household hey. and you know a, a, a loving marriage my parents been married for 44 years um this year <laughs> which is like that's good uh, <laughs> a unicorn today <laughs> but um, they, they said they didn't know much about college. They, they did what they had to do to, you know, take care of me and my brothers and sisters and things like did that. Both of your parents, they went to college? No, no. Uh, actually neither one of them finished high school. What? But, but the fact that they, to me, education wasn't the pinnacle of success for them. It was for them to raise, you know, seven children and they did that excellent mm. job yeah the youngest out of seven so i got a lot of thick skin um, that's amazing <laughs> that's so cool and um we we grew up in north philadelphia where it was you know it was actually pretty like you had to have tough skin mm. you had to be you know you couldn't be soft out here <laughs> you know what i mean philly is not a place uh you know it's the most talented and most gifted places you could be there's so many people here with talent but talent but you cannot be soft and I, I did grow up relatively you know um I, I I don't know what's the professional term for poor but below middle Already? class right. yeah we grew up in that I'm trying um, to think I is think, it relative part? I don't know psych term <laughs> probably low income so, yeah so um but they did an excellent job of making sure we had it, everything that we needed. And I grew up in a faith-based home where, you know, um, I see in the because background. That was, yeah, because, <laughs> because that was instilled in me, it allowed me to carry life, you know, a little bit more differently, like walking through that faith and believing in myself as well. I'm proud of you. Wow, that's amazing. So before we leave, how can you motivate the next generation to pursue your career in science? I would say by, I mean, this answer is not hard and there's no political answer to give. Um, for me, it's just one, continue doing what I'm doing, just being myself and not trying to put on a facade, not trying to fake it till I make it. 
Um, for me, it's always been about being a little bit more vocal, especially via social media, um, where I can admit to my flaws, you know, in industry and I can, you know, I'm not giving up no industry secrets now, but I'm just telling, like, you know, what is hey, the secret? Text me. Like, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Like, hey, I mess up in the lab. I have failed experiments and stuff like that, too, because most people think when you fail, like, oh, this is it. Like, no, like, this is our job. Fell forward. Yeah, we fell forward to the to the final product. So for me, it's just about being transparent, um, being open and honest and, um, you know, just put myself out there. Um, you know, I, I've been very blessed that, you know, God has given me an awesome platform for me to tell my story and be relatable to a lot of people. So I, I would say the most part, for the most part, just be myself and be so, transparent. So like, what's the next plan? PhD, like? The next plan. Professor? I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I got into- um, Your own company? I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got into uh, my PhD program, yeah. but- I decided to pursue other things, um, <laughs> which, you like, know, which, which, which does have to do with uh, the STEM and the youth. I will not give up any secrets as of yet. I can't say anything yet, but it is to come this fall. Um, and I'm looking forward to this very big project that I've been working on. So that Are is you what's next. TV? Uh, it, it probably could hit TV. It definitely yeah. will be all over social media pretty soon. I'm excited for you. Keep us updated. So when do we know about this project? The latest September. September mm -hmm. 1st. That'll be the latest. Okay. I can't wait. It's a long time. But thank you so much for being here and being able to hear your story. You're like the best. And very, really, I'm really proud of your work. And a lot of people are proud of what you're doing as well. So continue to being the best that you can. And people are looking up to you. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right.